We work hard as physicians to take care of the health and well-being of our patients. But when it comes to our money, do we have the same condition of care? Probably, probably not. Let's change that together. Welcome to the Financial Freedom for Physicians podcast, where we'll fight and advocate for your financial literacy. As always, I'm your host, Dr. Christopher Liu. Thanks for being here. Let's jump into the show. Hey guys, I want to welcome you guys to the Financial Freedom for Physicians podcast. We've got a great episode this week. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button as well as the notifications bell and be sure to like, comment, and share if you like this episode and we'll get into this week's sponsor and show. This week's episode is sponsored by CityVest. CityVest has quickly become the most popular and best way for doctors to invest in top-performing real estate, private equity funds that are usually reserved for institutional investors. This unique access to investing in these institutional funds is available for the first time ever through CityVest easy and secure online investment platform. CityVest does the hard work of conducting due diligence and vetting the investments. They even get a third-party due diligence report that is posted on their website. As a result of aggregating a several million dollar investment amount into their access funds, CityVest gains access to investing in the institutional investment and is able to negotiate better investment terms such as a 12% preferred return. You can check them out at cityvest.com or go to the link in the show notes below. Now on to the show. Welcome, everybody, to this week's podcast episode for the Financial Freedom for Physicians podcast, and I'm your host, Dr. Christopher Liu. We advocate four types of freedom. First is financial, second is emotional, third is location, and fourth is time freedom. And so my mission is to bring you people from all over the world doing fascinating things that are influencers, thought leaders, physicians, entrepreneurs. And so today we have Dr. Bonnie Ku. She's an amazing guest. She's been on Passive Income MD. She's been on so many different platforms, and we're here to talk about her journey and uh, all things about financial freedom. So, Bonnie, welcome. Welcome. Uh, Thank you. Thanks for having me on. I was about to tell you welcome, but this is your show. (laughs) (laughs) No, I I was just, I was, uh, I know we were talking backstage, but I'm so excited to have you on this podcast. And I know um, it's just, I'm happy to have so many, you know, physician influencers, thought leaders. So, and just, so just tell us more about your background, your story. I know you've, you've told it, shared it, and uh, I just want the audience to hear it again. So I am a dermatologist by training. I don't know if your audience are is specifically physicians and I am from South Korea. I actually was born there. Most people don't know that, but I moved here when I was barely two. So it sounds like I was born here basically. <laughs> and I, let's see. So I, I never thought I would become an entrepreneur. Like I thought I would, you know, be a physician and do that for the rest of my life, so to speak. But, you know, things change. You meet people along the way. And my life sort of did a big, I don't want to say U-turn, but took a different path. And that's kind of why we're talking today. I ended up working with a coach, then becoming a coach myself and I started out in financial education and that was totally unexpected. People always ask me like, how did that happen? I just was reading books and noticed that people didn't really know much about money. And I just was helping a lot of people do that. And I really enjoyed it. And then I realized the missing piece, honestly, was how people think about money, all their, all the belief systems. And so now I do that. And I wrote a book recently, but as I alluded to earlier, I think I'm in the middle of another transition. One thing is, you know, your dermatology and, you know, that's sort of, you know, what all medical students, people aspire to. And so what made you transition from derm to, you know, doing the work that you're doing now? I know everyone's like, isn't that like the best specialty? (laughs) But, you know, I think with all things, it's like, I think, you know, for medicine, you have to do what you love. And so, of course, I think dermatologist is the best because I love it. But people say that about whatever they do, usually, hopefully people do what they love. Right. And so, like I said, I I wasn't expecting to do anything else except for being a dermatologist, 
But like I said, I just started helping people with money education and I wasn't thinking about it at all as a business. But after I started working with a coach, you know, she would tell me that she saw just so much possibility for me. And then other people also said that. And I was kind of confused if I'm perfectly honest. <laughs> like I didn't, I never thought like, oh, this is going to make me money. But I think one day I just decided like, hey, why not? Like, cause people always ask like, how did you decide? Like, I think I just literally decided. I kind of was like, why not? And then I, you know, made money. I made a lot of money doing this and that was fun. <laughs> and it wasn't even so much like it's fun to make money, believe me, but it was also fun to learn about business and entrepreneurship, meeting people who do that. And I honestly, I think that's what's most fun about business is the self growth, the personal growth, and then being around other people who are doing the same. And I think business is such a great vehicle to facilitate personal growth because you really have to go against all societal norms to be crazy enough to start your own business. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's so funny. It's like, cause uh, you know, I love your, like your, I love your, you know, you're so passionate about, and it was so interesting is like, you know, you never started out with, you know, wanting to make money. It was more just like, cause you tried something new and you like, you found it interesting and then you found the way to like monetize it. And, you know, so I think that's so like most entrepreneurs, they're like, Oh, I want to, you know, do this to get into money. And so, but I think that's a really interesting mindset and frame of mind. So. You know, by definition, a business and an entrepreneur is going to make money. But if that's the only reason, like it's just not going to be enough to sustain you because it's entrepreneurship is hard. It's so much easier to be an employee. Yeah. So I think money is definitely one of the priorities. Otherwise, it's a hobby, right? Uh -huh. Or a nonprofit, I guess. But nonprofits have to make money too, you know? So, yeah. But yeah, I think if people, I think the sky is the limit in terms of how much money you could make having your own business. Mm -hmm. But like I said, if that's the only reason, like it's just going to be hard and you'll probably quit. Yeah. Yeah. So tell us, uh, tell us about w wealthy mom MD, like who it caters to, you know, what you offer. I know a lot of, uh, the audience would be interested in finding out more about you and possibly working with you. Yeah. It's so interesting. Like whenever I look back at decisions I've made, sometimes I don't understand why, I made those decisions, but usually later on, it becomes more clear. So I remember when I rebranded. So when I first started my blog, it was called Miss Bonnie MD. And that was just named after me. I didn't really put much thought into it. And then when I decided to, you know, go all in on the business, I decided to rebrand because, you know, it's important to know what, what a brand name means for the most part for a coaching business anyway. And so Miss Bonnie MD, it just tells you that I'm a physician and my first name, but doesn't really say anything. And so that's why I decided to rebrand to Wealthy Mom MD. I don't even remember how that name came about. It was definitely lots of brainstorming to get there. I had a bunch of other names. For example, I actually I actually bought the domain Rich Bitch MD. <laughs> even though I knew I wasn't going to use it, but I was like, that is such a cool name and it was available, so I bought it. But anyway, I picked the word wealthy for a number of reasons because... I knew at the time that it wasn't just about money. Like when I think of wealth, like, yeah, there's definitely money involved, but I also think of as it being more holistic and what you said earlier about the different types of freedoms that you, you know, are all about. Like, I think wealth really also includes emotional wealth, right? Mm -hmm. And that includes time freedom and all that stuff. So I remember when I chose the name, I knew I wanted to pick a name that was more than just money versus I guess I could have called myself I don't know, money mom MD or something, right? Which would have been like a great alliteration. Uh -huh. But I think I, it's like I knew at the time that it wasn't always just going to be about money. So, but I'm so glad I did because it, it really goes in line with what I'm thinking about doing next. Mm. Yeah. And that brings us to a good segue is, you know, you mentioned transitions and, you know, I, I you know, a lot of my friends and colleagues, you know, 2020, 2021, you know, these were huge wake up calls and they're starting to live life more intentionally just prioritize their values and beliefs and their goals. So tell us more about, you know, this and then what you're, what you're planning next. Yeah. So yeah, I, I think you're absolutely right. I think the pandemic and not just for physicians, but everyone to kind of rethink their priorities, it really kind of forced people to pause. And I'm glad that happened. Like, I don't, 
I'm not glad a pandemic happened, but I think many of us really needed to have that forced pause and rest, although not all physicians got to do that because, you know, depending on what you do, you probably had to work more. Mm -hmm. But for a lot of people, it was like a forced pause. And I think that's really important because I think it it makes you really think about what's really important to you. It's so easy to kind of like go through the motions, stay on the hamster wheel, so to speak. And it didn't do that for me specifically. Like I just kind of was continuing with my business and it just like really worked out that my business was online. That's kind of the beauty of an online business. And so I was able to just do that instead of practicing, meaning like I could take a break from practicing, but it's interesting people. I think a lot of people assume that I must have a lot of money (laughs) or something. I mean, it's not that I don't, but I don't think, I think people will be surprised if they actually looked at my accounts, but that's kind of what I really want to tell your listeners is like, Options aren't dictated by how much money you have. I think a lot of people think that. And on the flip side, money definitely gives you options, but it's not 100% necessary. It's not as necessary as people think it is to start making changes in their life. And I think what stops a lot of people is they have this like forever mindset that if they pivot, then they're not going to make any money and that's going to derail their whole life. Does that make sense? Yeah. I just, I really have this mindset that things are temporary and can change at any moment. And I mean that in a good way. I don't mean that in a bad way, like not having, you know, a sense of security and things like that. So that's not what I mean. But I think when we have this mindset that, for example, like as a physician, you know, the the job, because most of us are employed, it can seem really safe and secure. But I think the pandemic showed us that's not the case. Mm -hmm. But, you know, a lot of the clients I work with who they, you know, a lot of their goals is to work part-time and they're so scared of doing that because of money. I just kind of want to show everyone that it could just be temporary. Like, cause I think so many people are working so much. They don't have time to think about their life. You know, there's a quote by Michael Hyatt. I really like it's something like most people spend more time planning their vacation than planning their life. Mm-hmm. Wow. And I think that's really true, right? People get so excited about planning vacations and I love planning vacations too, but like, what if we put that same time and energy into really thinking and planning our life? So I'm not sure if I answered your question. I may have gone off. Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> off topic a bit. <laughs> no, that's that's so profound because you know the narrative is you know you have to have you know X amount and then you can you know walk away and really it's it's what you alluded to. It's more just like having the ability and you know the the means and the freedom. So I think you know that's like this. It's just so profound. Just the it's like a whole way of shifting the way we think about you know money and freedom and time so um and uh, really just and i think if we were to adopt if more people were to adopt that your um type of way of thinking a lot more people would you know be less scared to you know go out and and do you know what they wanted to do so yeah i mean most people think it takes a lot of time meaning like years to have that money for the freedom and mm-hmm. I just like to challenge people, like, what if that's not true? Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's what stops people is they're like, well, if I, you know, pivot, then I'm not going to be able to save enough money. Because, you know, most people are really thinking about money in terms of compound interest in the stock market. And mm-hmm. that's like the bare minimum, of my opinion, in terms of the speed of which, of how people can, you know, make and create wealth. I was focusing more on the other types of freedom. And obviously, I do invest and put things into you know, mostly real estate now, but also myself, like, you know, I'm only limited by what I can do by my mind. And so I'm investing heavily in that. And I have no doubt that I'll be creating a lot more money than I do now. So I really don't worry about like, oh, I'm not putting away 20 or 30 or $50,000 into investments every year, because Uh I'm not, I don't have that self-imposed limit that that's what's required. And that's one of the reasons why you're able to be free and didn't do everything. So then you also, you wrote a book and I know a lot of people are interested because I know it had a great launch and a great public reception. So, and I'm just, and I would love the readers to have you talk more about your book and everything. So the book I wrote is called Defining Wealth for Women, Peace, Purpose, and Plenty of Cash. And so kind of what the title talks about, it is a money book for women, but it's not your regular money book. I'm not like taking you through, hey, this is how to invest and this is how to do that. Like I do give some pointers, but it's more about why so many women have trouble with money or don't have the confidence to invest or have like self-imposed limiting beliefs. I actually explain the why 
this is the case for most high achieving women, because I think, you know, just from like, you know, talking with literally thousands of women, like we all kind of have the same limiting beliefs and it's like, huh, that's weird or that's interesting. I wonder why. And so I've just learned more about that. You know, a lot of it has to do with the socialization of women specifically, but then also just what most of the world has told us about money. Things like money is hard or the pursuit of money is bad or don't be greedy. And, you know, people generally have a negative connotation of rich people. Or if you even say I'm rich, like people think that's like bad. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. They're like offended almost, right? And it's so yeah. strange. Like, why does money do that? Like, it's so interesting to me. So that's kind of what I wanted. The point of the book is just to help people understand what they think about money and how to, you know, reframe that. And so that's why I wrote it. And uh, yeah, so it got published early 2022. Yeah. And I saw there's, I saw there were so many social media posts and I, you know, there's so many great reviews on Amazon. So um, for all the listeners out there, be sure to go on the Amazon search Bonnie Koo and, and check out the book. It's really, it's a really great book. I know a lot of uh, physicians, they're interested in getting started doing what you do, any tips and pointers, how to get started? So I guess the question a lot. And the reason why I'm just hesitating is because I don't think I started it in a traditional way. Cause I think most people I meet, they have the idea for the business already and they want to know how to start. Like I feel like I kind of did it a little backwards because I was never thinking about this as a business idea. I just noticed that I was good at this and there was a demand for it. But I guess if it was starting all over, I think the first thing is just having the courage to even like verbalize that idea that you want to do. Cause I think a lot of us hold it back. Cause a lot of us are like, well, I don't think I can do that. Or someone else already does that. And so I think just listening to that inner voice, that, that tug that you, you know, hear or listen or feel. And then I think the next step is really to surround yourself with people doing that. Because I think if you don't do that and you talk to your quote unquote regular friends, and I'm, I don't mean that in a derogatory way, they're going to be like, why would you want to do that? <laughs> For the most part, right? Because they'll <laughs> yeah. think you're crazy, especially if you are a physician or some other already well-paid professional. They'll be like, yeah. why would you want to do that? And so I think just expect that people will say that. But then I do think it's important to surround yourself with people. And, you know, you and I are both in the Leverage and Growth Accelerator community. So I think communities like that are just so important. Not just for the support, but also to see that so many people are doing this. Because I think it helps you build the belief that, well, if they can do it, maybe I can do it too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Community networking. That's so awesome. So um, there's, I would love to continue this conversation. And I know your time is so invaluable. So what uh, what are some final uh, takeaways and um, how can people get in contact with you? Yeah, so final takeaways. I think kind of like what I said earlier about things are temporary and like, you never know where you're going to go. And I think that's what stops a lot of people is they want to know the end point and they want to know exactly how they're going to get there. But that's not how life works. You know, one of the things <laughs> I say just to illustrate that is, you know, if someone's married, but this could work with any relationship or anything in their life. I ask, would you have been able to tell me how you met your husband or wife before you met them? And the answer is always no. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's not like they had this crystal ball, like, oh, I'm going to meet this person at this place. It's not how it works. And so, yeah. and I think people know that life is not some linear path. I think most physicians, because we're so type A, we want to be able to control things. Mm -hmm. I think we're drawn to medicine because of that set path. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I think you have to be open that it's going to be circuitous and you're going to, you know, <laughs> hit stop signs and detours and to be okay with that and whatever they think now about their idea of what they want to do, like just expect it's going to change over time yeah. as you go down the path. Like the path is like illuminated as you go. And I think if you're expecting yeah. it to look a certain way, like you're just going to be really disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was talking with a client the other day and then we're just talking about just like the narratives that were fed through just like society and the way things should be. And like, and it's just, it's just, I'm glad that COVID happened, not because of the, but just because it forced everybody to just sort of wake, wake up and like see what's going on and realize that there's so many we're being fair, fed so many different narratives and we're, we're able to choose what we want to believe in. So that's a, 
this is a fascinating conversation. Uh, we'd love to have you on the podcast as a future guest. And so thanks so much. You're welcome. What a fantastic show. I hope you enjoyed our very special guest. Just remember, as a shout out to our this week's sponsor, CityVest.com. CityVest gives you access to the best real estate private equity funds with enhanced investment terms, verified due diligence, and lower risk. You can check them out at CityVest.com or click on the link in the show notes below to hear about their upcoming investment offerings. I'm excited that you made it for another episode. You are truly the best. If you've been following the show for a while, you know that my passion is to bring you the education you need to find your path to financial freedom. Please come back week after week for new content, new resources, and great guests. Until then, if you haven't already, please be sure to check out the website, www.drchrisluemdphd.com for more support. I'll see you next week.